Has anyone ever asked you to solve any question like this and a friend tells you you can't do this? Don't allow anyone to tell you what you cannot do. These are questions under fraction and I know you can solve them. If you are in grade 7 or JSS 1, this very video is for you. We are going to teach you how to solve all these questions under fractions and at the end make you a super duper mathematician. Have you subscribed to our channel? If you have not, I want you to hit the subscribe button now so as to get most of these our videos once they are produced. Today we're going to look at fractions and we are going to solve just one of these questions, the first one. What are fraction? Fractions are just a part of a whole and so when you are given a value like this and you divide that whole number into four different parts if you take off one part out of these four parts that is two parts this whole fraction become what two over what four because you are taking two parts away from what from what from four Parts. So you divided a whole into what? Into a part and that is what we call a fraction. Now fraction is made up of two things. One we have the numerator that is the number above what? Above the fraction and the below, the one below we call it the word the denominator. denominator. So these are the two parts of a fraction. Now, it's very important to note that the numerator is above and the denominator is below. Now, fraction is made up of two types. What are they? The first one we call the proper fraction. The second we call the improper fraction. Now, what is it about a proper fraction? Now, our proper fractions are fractions that has what? That has the numerator less than the what less than the denominator so when you have any fraction in which the numerator is less than the denominator it is a what a proper fraction what are the examples example is 1 over 2 3 over 10 8 over 12 and what and on and on so when you see any fraction like this they are called proper fractions now what is it about the other type of fraction the other type of fraction we call them the what the improper fraction why are they called the improper fraction the improper fractions are fractions in which the what the numerator is what is greater than the denominator so when you see any fraction in which the numerator is greater than the denominator it is called a what it is called an improper fraction now let's look at examples of improper fraction a fraction like 16 over 8 20 over 9 100 over 20 and what and on and on the list goes remember i told you when a fraction is what the numerator is greater than the what the denominator it is what an improper fraction now do you note that now there is one kind of number people usually mistaking it to a fraction but it is not a fraction we call it the mixed number the mixed number are numbers that are made up of a whole number and also a what a fraction so a mixed number is made up of a whole number of a whole number and a what a fraction we call them the what the mixed number why are they called the mixed number because they are made up of what they are made up of what a whole number plus what a fraction now do you note this this is a whole number and this is a fraction now whenever you change a mixed number to a fraction we will always get an improper fraction do you know why 
because in an improper fraction the numerator is always greater than the denominator so now let's convert this mixed number to a fraction all we we'll have is what three times what six will give us what 18 because this will give you three 1 over what? 6. So this times this will give us 18. Then our 18 plus 1 will give us what? 19. So all of these will give us what? 19 over 1 over 6. Do you notice that the numerator is greater than the denominator? And that is why a mixed number will always give you uh, an improper what? An improper fraction. Now do you see that questions on that fractions can be very very easy now let's look at the very first question we're going to look at how we are going to reduce this fraction 3 over 18 to its lowest term you can be asked to reduce this fraction to this low to its lowest term what do we need to do 3 over 18 now what kind of fraction is this it's what it's a proper fraction why because the numerator is less than the what than the denominator now when asked to reduce a fraction to its lowest term all you need to do is three things one look for a common factor between the numerator and what and the denominator find a factor that is common to the numerator and the denominator two divide the that factor by the numerator and the word denominator divide the numerator and the denominator with that word fraction and three continue dividing with a common factor until you get the lowest word term now have these three points in your fingertips as we are going to use them to solve two questions one we're going to look for the common terms for these two numbers now, 3 can divide 3 to give us 3, and 3, 18 can divide 3 to give us 6. So, 3 is a common factor. Since 3 is a common factor, all we need to do is what? 3 divided by 3 are all over what? 18 divided by what? 3. That will give us what? 1. And this will give us what? 6. Now, do you notice that the lowest term of 3 over 18 is 1 over 6 because we can no longer find a common factor between the numerator and the denominator so you see that it can be very very easy now let's look at another question let's assume that you are asked to reduce this fraction to its lowest term now remember what i told you i said whenever you are asked to reduce a fraction to its lowest term the first thing you should think of doing is find a common factor a common multiple and that common factor can be able to divide this numerator and the denominator not denominator now let's look at that we have 90 and 1 2 6. now the lowest common factor will be 2 why because 2 can divide 90 and what 126 so if we take 2 as the lowest common multiple that is 2 now 2 will go with 90 and 1 what 26 2 90 divided by 2 that will give us 90 divided by 2 over 126 divided by what 2 now when you get a lowest common factor the next thing is to divide the numerator and the denominator by that lowest common multiple factor this will now give us what 45 over 126 divided by 2 this will give you 6 and this will give you what 3 now you see we've reduced the fraction to a lower term now we still have to reduce it because there is a common factor between 45 and 62 can 2 be the common factor no because 2 cannot divide 45 now but 3 can divide 45 and can divide 63 so 3 will be the lowest word 3 will be the word the factor this time around now let's look at 3 that will now give us what 45 divided by what 63 and this will be equal to what 45 divided by what 3 over what 63 divided by what 3 and what will this result to 45 divided by 3 will give us what that will give us 15 
over 63 divided by 2. 3 here, 3. 3 here will give you what? 2. And 3 here will give you what? 1. So you see, we've reduced the fraction further to 15 over 21. It can still be reduced further because there can be a common factor between 15 and 21. And that will be what? That will still be 3. So 3 can divide 15. 3 can divide 25. So 3 will be the next what? The next factor. So we'll have our 15 divided by 21 equal to what? 15 divided by what? 3 all over what? 21 divided by what? 3. Aha! You should be seeing the answer appearing now. Now let's look at what it will give us. 15 divided by 3 will give us what? 5. And 21 divided by 3 will give us what? 7. So you see, since there is no longer any factor that can reduce this and this, 5 over 3, 5 over 7 remains the lowest term, the lowest fraction compared to what? 90 over 126. So you see, it's very pretty easy. Now, solving or reducing a bigger fraction to a lowest fraction can be pretty, pretty easy. All you need to do is to follow the step we've shown you right from the beginning of this video. In our next video, we are going to look at, we are going to look at how to what, find the equivalent of a fraction. Don't miss that video. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now because our next video lesson is going to be exciting. I look forward to seeing you in the next class.